Have you ever sat staring at your computer wondering what on earth are you going to write? You know you need to write content but you've got no idea where to start. Hi there I'm Tanya and I guess you could call me a beach loving elephant collecting adventurer. I'm also the editor in chief of DARE which is an online magazine which connects 100,000 readers in over 60 countries and my mission is to help you unleash your inner daredevil and tell your unique story which cultivates a movement of shared wisdom. After a decade of living and working abroad and I won at quite a few international awards and built a very successful marketing communication career, I tamed my nomadic soul only for a little while because I still like to roam the world and I came back to Australia and within five years of returning home I had the tragic experience of having to bury my baby boy Tate um, and then was blessed with two healthy gorgeous gorgeous girls, Mia who's 15 and actually currently in Japan and Rani who's 13 in Vietnam. I, I I raised daredevils <laughs> um, and I did become the sole provider of my family and I experienced escalating credit card debt and was served home repossession papers so life was really really difficult for me with these two gorgeous little babies. So I had to dig deep to find the courage to move ahead and I, I needed to also feed my gorgeous girls so I took a big leap towards entrepreneurship and I developed the Get Naked Get Noticed workshops which were you know renowned around the world and um, created this online program that helped people gain publicity, free publicity. Then I launched DARE and both of those two projects combined have generated over ten million dollars in publicity for me and my clients which is you know, pretty amazing I think. And I believe that every adventure, experience or challenge unlocks a story that deserves a voice. And I aim to inspire you and our global community of daredevils to combine your purpose and your meaning with fun and excitement because really you need to have both to live an energetic and creative life. So let's get this party started. So let's start with going over what we're going to be covering today. And in the first section, it's what's dare and that's explaining the essence of your business in as few words as possible. So I've got an example there for you. And number two, that's what's Tanya. So this is a pictorial example of how you can create content when you're short of time. Um, and number three, that's my vision for you. So how to create your business that reflects who you are and save time because really I'd rather see you out there exploring the world and sharing your stories than stuck behind the computer figuring out what to write next. Um, and number four, section four, we've got some stats there which are worth paying attention to because they'll guide what content you should be creating and maybe what you should be letting go of. And in number five, that's where all the juice happens. We've got the content creation ideas. I've got heaps and heaps of practical ideas for you to get content out there when you really just don't fancy doing anything at all. So let's just kick off with a quote and I think this is a great quote because it says worry less about sounding professional and worry more about creating remarkable content that other humans can relate to. So it's really about humanizing the content and I've got some information and stats about that later on so I think that's really important. Don't worry about perfecting your work, just get it out there and so long as it's relating to other people then you're really on the right track. So what's dare? Dare's your inner spirit. It's a living, breathing expression of how you show up in the world. It's courage and determination to push the crazy, scary limits of life, forcing you to jump and then grow your wings as you soar higher and higher. It's that adventurous dreamer cultivating wisdom with every experience, taking you from a seeker to a learner to a teacher and then sharing your message with the world. And that's what we're going to speak about today, how you're going to share that message with the world. Okay, so who's Tanya? I think I said what's Tanya in the content, but um, <laughs> I'm meaning who, and that's me. <laughs> I want to use this as an, as an example to show how images tell a story. So rather than writing lengthy prose on your about page or any of your bios, use graphics which give your community a really vibrant sneak peek into your world and include things that you love and your family and where you've been and what makes you tick. You can see I've got my gorgeous family here of my... Um, on our wedding day three years ago and I've got some photos of when I was in Rome and sailing the Amalfi Coast, my girls there, my beautiful puppy here who likes to work with me. Um, I was in Dubrovnik um, when I was in Bali, it's the champagne that I love to drink, you know, walking along the beach. So you'll see a, a couple of examples of how I've done that on our website. So if you pop over to darewithtanya.com forward slash about dash dare, you'll be able to use that as an example. So try to think visually rather than too lengthy as far as writing 
your life story. You get way more interaction with people when they can see what you like rather than reading about what you like. Okay, so I have a vision for you. And the first part of the vision is about developing your inner storyteller because telling stories is a pilgrimage towards the unspoken and unknown and unheard wisdom, your wisdom. And when you meet new friends and share fascinating stories, your paths are destined to collide forever. And, and together you shape new terrain and you tap into your inner storyteller by sharing that wisdom. So, so that's, that's one of my goals for you now is to start thinking about yourself as a storyteller. The next thing I want to talk about is innovation, which is something that we value highly because it's the driving force that compels us to reach for those huge dreams amongst the stars. And to innovate means to take risks. So I'm here to dare you today to start innovating the way that you connect with your community. It's where all the fun begins. My next vision for you is about outsourcing and it's time to value your time. Give yourself permission to ask for help and to delegate because the greatest gift that you can give yourself and your business and your family is to know what needs to be done, which we'll cover today, and then outsource the doing. And that brings me to my vision of you time. My ultimate vision for you is to spend more time doing what you love, whether that's walking along the beach, hugging the kids, kissing your husband, traveling the world, painting landscapes, whatever that means to you, then to do more of this and then you become a storyteller with valuable wisdom to share. Now let's look at a few statistics. And I found this fascinating when I was doing some research for this presentation. Food, home and lifestyle topics account for 85% of the world's most viral content. It's not business and technology and news, that only accounts for 14%. And food is over half, 52%. You can see there's homes, 18%, lifestyle, 15%. So start thinking about weaving your message through the human factors, through what people are loving, which is about their lifestyle, their home, their family, and less of the boring, newsy, techie sort of style of content and more the lifestyle kind of content because as you can see, that's what's mattering most to people. Now I'm going to be talking about the importance of images in a, in a little while, but I also wanted to share these stats here that that I think were very important. If you look at um, tweets with images receive 18% more clicks, 89% more favourites and 150% more retweets. And there's a few other statistics there. Posts on Facebook with images have 93% more engagement. And in 2015, 70% of marketers had planned to use more visual assets in their communication. And business to business, business, to business marketing increased by 8% to 58%. And the use of infographics in the last year has increased by 9% to 52%. So you can see the statistics are showing that we need to be more visual with our content as opposed to wordy. So let's go through the five solutions I have for you today, how to write content when you don't feel like writing anything. Okay, First one is to repurpose your existing content. So why stare at your computer trying to come up with something new when you can actually repurpose your existing content? So you'll discover six ways to convert your existing material into fresh, shareable content. The second thing we're going to look at is content killers. If you want to impress your English teacher, then by all means use these in your writing. However, if you want to create succinct, snappy and shareable content, you need to avoid them. So I'll give you six things to start avoiding and that'll sharpen up your content straight away. Number three is images. And look, while cliches activate my snooze button, the adage a picture paints a thousand words is more like a storyteller's mantra than a cliche. So I'll give you six image ideas for you to use when you don't fancy writing anything at all. Number four is resources, a really valuable thing to share with your community. When you start sharing them, they'll actually keep coming back for more. So while the possibilities are endless, I'll give you six ideas of the kind of resources you can start sharing. And number five, everybody loves a good cheat. For those uninspired days when you really have no idea, there's a cheat sheet you can use. And I've selected six examples from my, my long 100 content creation cheats. Let's start with the six great ideas to repurpose your content. Number one is to create how-to lists. So review any of your existing content that teaches something. Extract three, five or ten steps from your feature 
the numbers are relevant, whatever number works for you, and convert them into a list. So take away all the joining paragraphs, the beginning, the end, just create a list of the key components, and that's it. You've created a how-to from your existing content. Some bonus points, if you take that list and create an infographic, I'll talk about that later, because that's even more shareable. Okay, so pull quotes. These are the most red element in a feature, and in magazines, you have to just flick through a few pages and see the pull quotes jumping out at you. Not only do they profile you as an expert, they are simple and easy to digest snippets of information that are easy to share. So convert the critical points in your existing content into a series of one maximum two sentence quotes. Just the key components, be very critical about adding extra words, just narrow it down to the key message and then once again if you want some bonus points create those into some visuals and we'll talk about those a little bit later. Presentations. Now you can take your existing content and convert the key messages into two to three point slides. You can add animation like I've added to this presentation and that adds a little bit of interest and just just you know just another element to your presentation. Just keep in mind it's a great project to outsource so if you don't know how to do this somebody else will so you just give them your content and say make a slide presentation for me. Okay. Upload the presentation to SlideShare and embed the code onto your site. So you've just basically got, if you've got six months worth of articles, then you've now got another six months worth of presentations you can use. Audio is a great way to convert your existing content. So take your presentation or even, even just an article and record a narration over your points. Basically what I'm doing now, I've got my presentation and I'm recording over that. And I've actually, to be honest, I've actually not done this before for presentations. I'm so used to doing live presentations and so it does take a little time to get used to, but now you can't shut me up. I'm, I'm, I'm on a roll now. <laughs> so you can keep it simple and just speak into your smartphone and then overlay that um, over your presentation. And once again, that's an outsourceable project. Once you've completed the media component or the, the recording then you overlay it with your content and post it on your blog and there you go and or you can just upload the mp3 file and let people listen to you reading out your article so that's just another way you can repurpose that video if you're familiar with iMovie or PowerPoint or Keynote, which is what I use, you can upload audio to the presentation you tweak it and you save it and then you share it and then you've got a video now if that's double dutch to you once again, please outsource. Remember that's my vision for you, that you spend your time knowing what needs to be done, knowing that you can create videos and then handing over the work to somebody else. Think about those special beach walks and cuddles with the kids. So just know that you can take your existing content and create videos from that. Another great way to repurpose your existing content is to create a checklist. Now checklists are fantastic because they help people feel accomplished. You know, don't you love ticking all those things off, tick, 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 tick? And it assures them that they haven't forgotten an important step. So if you've had any process that you've done, how you've created something or any how-tos, you can also convert those into a checklist, for example, how you create a meal or how you braid hair or anything that you've actually done or share with your community that takes them through steps. You can create a checklist. Just remember to put those little box there so they can feel really accomplished when they tick those off. So there you have six ways you can repurpose your existing content. And most important, just outsource whatever you don't know what to do. Okay, here we've got six great ideas for eliminating your content killers. And the first one is to drop the LY. If you did just this one thing, your writing will improve. So eliminate any word that ends in LY. It's that simple. So for example, a really great film becomes a great film. Because a great film is strong enough. It doesn't have to be really great. Now I saw recently at a, I won't name the chain, but if I, if I did, you would know them. It was a supermarket chain and they had this big sign on the wall and I just felt like getting my red pen out there and, and um, crossing out half the words. So it says, top quality at incredibly low prices guaranteed. For me, that was too wordy. I would like to see it guaranteed quality at low prices because incredibly low prices, I mean, it, low is low. So what's incredibly low? So 
Now you'll start seeing that the LY words are completely redundant. As I said, your English teacher may like them, but really they can you can do it do without them. So there's other one key peeve that I have and I suggest you never use very, really, or wonderfully, or anything in front of unique. Unique is unique. It can't be very unique, or more unique, or really unique. Unique is unique. So you find, you'll, you'll find now that anytime somebody says that's really unique or very unique, you'll start hearing that that just doesn't sound right. Okay, the next thing is passive versus active tone. So passive writing talks at people. And you can identify when you're being passive when you're talking when you use the words to be or be am is active writing takes people on a journey for example the boy was bitten by the dog that's passive versus active the, the dog bit the boy so there's action happening there it might take a little while for you to sort of go through and see the difference but now you're aware of it you'll be able to recognize this also avoid avoid the other passive words such as will or by the or been was were so we will be going we are going is even better but even sort of perhaps avoid are so use those two examples the boy was bitten by the dog or the dog bit the boy okay so it just gives you an idea to tighten up your writing be active rather than passive number three duplications I remember in my corporate days, I'd walk into the boardroom when we had our commercial meetings and the engineers who would give me content to edit for the marketing purposes would cringe when they saw that I'd basically red penned and deleted most of their stuff. And what I noticed was that most of the stuff that I had to cross out was were duplications. So my, my guide to you is use a word only once in a sentence. So it's not too complicated. If the, sentence, if the word appears two or three times, then eliminate it, period. And the other point about duplications is don't repeat concepts. So once, in, once is enough. You don't need to go over and over and over saying the same things five different ways. Killer number four is all about length. And so the jury's out on this one. And I wanted to address it here because while short, sharp content is easy to digest, the Huffington Post recently reported that the longer the content, the more shares it gets. And the reason for this is, is that fewer people are creating quality and in-depth content. So what does this mean to you? This means that if you do decide that you feel like writing a lengthy, well-researched piece of work, piece of copy, then you post that and share that amongst your community. It's likely to stand out and be recognized ahead of your competition. So this is a dual-edged sword here. So too long and your content's not going to be shared too short and it may not be shared. So the key here is quality content all the way. Killer number five is failing to write aligned with your brand voice. So if your vision is to excite and stimulate and energize your readers that ensure that your written and spoken word radiates that energy. So forget about being professional and corporate and make sure that you flow with your brand identity and its character and its temperament. So really give some thought about the persona that you wish your brand to have and make sure that all your content radiates that persona. Now the last killer I wanted to talk about is the pesky butt. Not to be confused with the perky butt, we can do those. We just don't like using buts in sentences because but negates whatever precedes it. So if you've had this fantastic concept or idea and then you've said but, that idea becomes null and void the minute that you use that word. So beware of the hidden buts, the howevers and the yets because they also have the power to demolish the true intention of your message. While there are many content killers, if you get started with these six, you're well on the way to creating great copy. Now one of the best ways to create content when you don't feel like creating content is to use images. So I've got six ideas for you to use images today. And the first one is captions. And you can create a steady stream of content just by adding captions to your images. You don't need to have a backstory or any lengthy prose. Just add interesting, informative, entertaining or inspiring captions beneath a series of holiday snaps or people or nature photos, food photos, whatever it is that you fancy. And you're done. It's that simple. Captions, images, post. 
Point number two is infographics. And what I personally love about infographics is that it takes me out of my thinking brain into my creative brain. And essentially you can share anything in an infographic, statistics, graphs, lists, tips, trends, and any otherwise dull data can be converted into an infographic. So keep it simple to start with and make sure they're image rich so you can either use photos or graphics. And have fun with creating infographics and if you have no idea where to start then outsource this to Fiverr because remember it's all about having more time to spend out there in the world living your daring adventures. Point number three is your phone. It's such a great resource. I've just checked and I have 1,171 photos on my phone. I think most of them are of my new puppy. Um, more than enough to create dozens of image storyboards. So there's um, sunsets, which can be a daily inspirational quote. Um, there's laughing children and you can think about maybe you can do a happiness quote or a, a message about happiness or laughing or children or family. I've got some budding roses. And, that inspires me to think about slowing down life and watching being out in nature. So every image tells a story. So go through your phone and start pulling out some of those stories. Number four is another hung jury point and this is about quotes. So whether you love them or you loathe them, they work. So think about adding quotes to your images for a quick content solution. Or you can even create a series aligned with your brand. For example, if you really feel aligned with flowers and florals or trees or nature, then you can align those with quotes about growth and expansion and connection and unity, all different sorts of words that are connected with you know, flowers and the outdoors. So if you're short on time and don't have any content to create, pull out a few images that add a quote and you're done. Point number five, collages are a great way to convert existing content into digestible, shareable, image rich content. So rather than listing a whole heap of items in a, in a post, consider creating an image collage and keep text to a minimum, you know, maybe one or two words per photo. And I've got an example of this on my about page um, that's at darewithtanya.com forward slash about dash dare for an example. So that was all about the things that I love and I wanted to share with people a little bit about my, my personal life. And so rather than listing all the things that I love, I created a collage with pictures of my puppy and my family and my roses and my travel adventures with one or two words so at a glance somebody can see wow okay that's what she fancies that's how she likes to spend her time or that's what she loves so think about collages for content rather than lists and point number six for using images to create content when you don't feel like writing any content is step by steps this is a great way to take people on, on a journey from the start to the finish of a project so if you're developing a new product or you're renovating a home holding an event or writing a book, it could be any, anything. Take people on a journey, so take photos of the befores and afters or a little bit of the conceptual design of your product. Even if it's an online product, take screenshots. If you're holding an event, maybe snippets of the food or possibly the venue, maybe a little, little corner piece of the invitation. If you're writing a book, maybe a bit of the cover. What, whatever it is that you're doing, tease your community with photo snippets every step of the way and take them on a journey from, from the concept to the beginning to the end and invite comments because you might find that those comments will help you tweak and adjust your development of the process along the way. So now you have six great ideas for creating content using images when you really don't fancy writing any content at all. Some other great ideas when you don't feel like writing copy is to share your resources. Now think about all of the things that you use, whether it's in the kitchen, at home, in the office, in the garden, all the apps that you love, all the, all the solutions to save you time, any of those things that you can't live without and they are valuable resources because if you love them then chances are somebody in your community will love them. So I'm going to share six of my favourite resources, I have a very long list but these might give you an idea of the kind of things that are shareable and can be converted into content. The first one is graphics because design and graphics can drain your marketing budget so a resource that I like to share is 
a free graphics tool and it's invaluable for clients with financial constraints and you may know of it it's Canva it's a fantastic tool for designing products and graphics so if you use a tool like that then you can share that content and maybe give a couple of examples of how it works for you the second point here is food everybody eats and most people cook so if you found some great foodie blogs that you like or that you love or you can't live without or you go to an online store to get all your you know your raw food ingredients like I do then tell somebody about them and of course I love SimoneBaldwin.com her healthy gorgeous and tipsy tips are fantastic and each newsletter I look forward to that week's recipes so think along those lines things that you can share with your community that you love because chances are they'll love it too Another resource I love sharing are hacks because everyone loves a good life design business or style hack. I didn't even really know what a hack was until recently. My children made me feel like I was completely in the dark ages but now I found them I'm quite addicted to them. So sharing your own favorite hacks is a great you know it's a great resource. For example I recently saw um, how to iron your collar with a hair straightener or how to freeze grapes so that keeps your wine cold. I love that one and um, how to declutter your desk or all different sorts of things. So I'm going to try a couple of hacks for inboxpause.com and when I've actually experienced those, I'm actually going to share my experience of that as well. So there's two folds when you share resources. You can share the resource plus you can also share your experience. Another great resource is to share blogs because every industry has dozens and dozens, maybe hundreds of bloggers that are sharing their perspective of a particular topic. So figuring out which ones to read is really the hard part. So if you create a resource of your favorite wedding bloggers or food and wine blogs or travel blogs or business blogs, relationships, hiking, surfing, really that's endless, then you make it easy for your community to actually look for the, those resources. So I'm just going to say that my favorite blog at the moment is my own blog, which is um, darewithtanya.com which we're about to launch the, the, the blog component of very, very soon is about the 99 dares, so all the 99 dares that we're doing. And so actually creating and writing that blog has um, been a lot of fun. So that's about adventure and travel, food and wine, a combination of all of those things. So for me, when I share that, I'm actually sharing my blog as well as those resources that I love to use for all of those things. Resource number five is for all our adventurers here because all dev devils love adventure experiences and travel and we always appreciate a good resource to make dealing with the booking and the reservations a lot easier. So if you have a great travel find, you know, you found a great massage or you've gone to a restaurant that you love or there's a sailing um, trip that you must go on or some sort of a adrenaline rush that you just think that everybody's going to love, add that to your resource list. There are potentially hundreds. I, I love the, the, some of the bigger ones like you know what if if I want to go out for a cheap holiday or um, Webjet if I'm looking to c compare prices and the um, cruise about is fantastic a friend of mine works for cruise about and always getting these cr amazing deals I think there was something the other day like you could go away for a week for five hundred dollars for everything included so any of those great finds are fantastic things to share with your community and I'm going to end with the best resource and that's you because you have to remember that your community is following you because they love what you have to share in your unique way or however you share it. It's you that they want to spend more time with. So give them more of you. So create a resource page on your website that links to all your, your, your best content, your most powerful messages, your key blog posts and anything that you've actually created that helps them and their life start sharing more of that so basically just a summary of those best posts and that's your that's your resource page that's your blog post for the week and if you up update that frequently then you're helping people navigate through all your content and reminding them of how amazing that you are Okay, now we're at the last six points and these are some of my favorite the cheats because everybody loves a great cheat so the first cheat off my long list, as I mentioned earlier, I have a hundred of them, so I'm sharing six of them with you today, is travel. So no matter where you go or how long you've been, you always return a little different because something's impacted you or something's had, a, had left an imprint on your life. So turn your travel lessons into a story. For example, the 10 favorite places to visit in Vanuatu or what Italy taught you about family values or how not to travel in Bali or how, whatever it was 
that you learned on your trip convert that into content and go back to okay do you want to write something or do you want to do it as a pictorial so go back to the image slides and think about how to do that maybe create an infographic about that so any lesson that you've learnt on a travel adventure becomes a great cheat content point number two in my cheats it's recipes <laughs> you might see a theme here if it's all about food or adventure or travel then they're normally on my cheats and my resources because that's what I love to share with my community because we're daredevils going out there experiencing the world stepping out of our comfort zone so I look for resources that help to stimulate that it doesn't have to be about a particular product I'm launching or a program I'm launching or a workshop that I'm holding it's because I know the psyche so well of my audience that I go you know what I think they're going to love this recipe so that's that brings me to point number two given that 52% of the most shareable viral content on the internet is food start posting some of your favorite breakfast or smoothie or dinner or lunch or macaroon or cocktail recipes so anything that you thought wow that was a really great meal or this is a great four-step process anything that inspired you as far as food and recipes goes share it and look and if you know Jamie Oliver and cooking and food is really not your thing share grandma's favorite apple pie and you know or your mum's favorite soup recipes or something that you've come across so you don't have to be sharing your own recipes your own content you can actually be sharing other content that makes your community's life easier and more inspiring my next favorite cheat is about voyeurism because be honest a sneak peek into someone's secret world is alluring right so dare to share a little snippet of your life behind closed doors what's happening in your fridge um, open your wallet and let people see what's what's in there in your pantry in your makeup bag in your wardrobe in your wine cellar in your underwear drawer in fact I, I wrote an article many years ago what does your underwear drawer say about you and I actually took photos and I've done declutter things where I've actually shown people like all the things that I'm throwing out of my pantry so if you feel that that's something that's of interest to your community if you're health and wellness so yeah sharing your pantry if you're beauty and fashion sharing what's in your in your makeup bag but even if that's not your industry people love to have a little sneak peek into your personal world so take them on a journey take them inside your house and I'm not saying share all those private moments that you don't want to share but just give people a little bit of a sneak peek into your private life because that humanizes you and connects you and makes you more approachable and endears you to your community another fantastic cheat for when you don't feel like creating content is to think about the music that you're listening to so share your latest Pandora or iTunes or Guevara playlist or a selection of your favorite YouTube videos um, and you can also try theming things for example think you know my workout selection or this is what I take the beach barbecue or this is what we listen to on the school drop-off or cooking dinner or chilling out with wine or I don't know what, what hanging out with your friends whatever it is that you're listening to share with your community maybe create a playlist or a link to the videos or a link to the download and that's content and that's content that's inspiring and interesting because everybody loves to listen to a new tune and even, even if they don't like that particular tune they get an insight into what you like and that's really important now number five is a resource that I love receiving because I'm not a shopper and I need to be rescued at times like Christmas or birthdays or have shopping ideas so even though we have had great shopping and Christmas wish lists in dare that we've published over the years that is not my cup of tea searching for that so if somebody has a great fashion or foodie or makeup or wish list of any kind then I'd love to receive that so if you can create a list of potential gifts for teenage girls or for dog lovers or bookworms or for grandmothers or sports enthusiasts or budding chefs or travelers or social media junkies anything then create a list so all you really need is an image and a link and you're done 10 of those and you've got this amazing content I know that would make my life easier so I'm inviting anybody to pop that over on my Facebook page if you've got a shopping list that you think would make my life easier send it over and the last resource I want to share is actually one of our own it's our dare list because I think there's nothing better than tick tick ticking all those adventures off your dare list because your dreams have the power to inspire another person so start the journey by sharing what's on your list and if you haven't 
seen the dare list yet or created yours you can pop on over to, to darewithtanya.com forward slash dare dash lists and create lists there's six of them there and that's been a great resource to inspire people to think about who are they going to meet and where are they going to go and what skills are they going to learn and what treasures are they going to to get so think about your own resources and so amongst all the other resources that you're sharing perhaps share some of your favorite things that you've also created over the years so here you have six great sheets for when you really don't feel like writing content but you know something needs to get out pick one of these or even maybe shake up all your content a little bit include these in your actual regular content calendar because when you start sharing all these resources these cheats these images all these different things we've spoken about today then you're going to have no excuse for connecting with your community and sharing quality content I just wanted to end today with a chat about one of my favorite pieces of content at the moment which is quizzes because according to the Huffington Post eight out of ten of the most shared articles in the past eight months were quizzes that's pretty high so why quizzes well according to them because when you share your quiz results it fuels your identity and ego others learn more about who you are and what you value and your tastes so quizzes are a great way to for you to get insights into your community but people also are tapping into that sort of element of narcissism and wanting to share people bits about themselves and I've noticed that with when, since we've launched our daredevil persona quiz within the first day we had 352 people take the quiz so if you'd like to learn more about how I created that quiz then let me know by popping over to darewithtanya.com and taking in the quiz because in the next week or two we are I'm going to do a training to show you exactly how I developed these daredevil personas because all these people have been asking me how did you create them and where do they come from and and it was a process for that and if you're thinking about creating a quiz as part of your content then it's be great to have you on there and jump on board so you'll be invited to join the training via our private Facebook group so you'll get a link to that after doing the quiz plus I also want to know which of the daredevils you are there's a little sneak peek picture of them all here so as we finish off today I just want to remind you that the key component to creating copy or any kind of content is to make it good quality whether it's a caption and a photo one of the cheats or it's a lengthy article that you've well researched so long as it's quality content that is impacting the life of your audience then you're on the right track and for those days when you really just don't fancy doing anything and looking at a screen just is not appealing to you anymore go back and review this video because there are hundreds of different ideas that you could have to create content when you're just not in the mood for creating content or you'd rather be at the beach so if you have any questions whatsoever about anything that I've shared today or about creating quizzes or writing copy or my favorite champagne or the best travel tips that I've got anything at all please either jump over to Facebook Tanya Rush and find me over there and leave a message on my wall or leave comments or questions below so I'll make sure that I answer everything that I that I can answer or direct you to the to to the right people who can better answer your question if I'm not able to so it's been fantastic sharing this time together I hope that you feel inspired to go out there and create great content without having to rip your hair out and try and figure out where to start so I look forward to seeing you very soon somewhere in this great amazing world of ours